Hi everyone and welcome to the real-time coloring version. So this is where I show you how I copic color the character, the focal image for my Magical Friends card. So the stamp that I used is a digital stamp called Sealed with a Kiss. It's by Make It Crafty and I printed it on some Make It Colorful cardstock with my Epson printer which uses the uh, Dura Bright uh, Epson inks uh, because they are actually works really good with the Copics. So um, this whole video is one hour and 45 minutes long because this took time to color. Uh, one hour and 45 minutes is actually the cut down version uh, where I remove all of the kind of changing your pens and changing the colors and figuring out what you want to have and which color to use. So I think uh, in the end, I think the card took a total of four hours to make but I really really liked it and I and it has a lot of details uh, and I have a lot of uh, tips and tricks for you throughout this video which I will voice over completely because I'm insane. Uh, you will also probably get to know me a lot better <laughs> if you want to stay on. However, if you want to see this full coloring but you want to see it in a sped up version you can actually do that in the YouTube video thing. So if you are on YouTube, I do not know if it this work on the embedded player, but if you are on YouTube in the bar uh, on the on the player itself, there should be like an icon where you actually can speed up the clips. I haven't actually looked on how fast you can do it, but you can speed it up. Uh, and if you think I am sound a lot like a chipmunk and you get annoyed by that, just turn the sound off, add some other music and you can see it go a little bit faster because I really took my time on this one. Uh, but if you, for some strange reason, want to sit here with me for one, one hour and 45 minutes, uh, let's jump into it. So. Um, when I started this image, the first thing I did was to color her face. And I did that because I felt I needed to both. I wanted her face there because I'm going to color her for a long time. I didn't want to color her full face until I finished the dress. Um, and but like color with all the shadings and everything. So instead, I just did the lightest color. This will mean that I will use the light color twice on her face, so she will be a little bit darker than that the facial I usually have. But I was totally okay with it this turn time around. My um, the second thing I'm doing is I'm going in with the lightest color of the blues. So I was thinking that she would have like a blue. I don't know if it's called a petticoat. I don't think it's called a petticoat, but like a jacket, uh, the dress jacket. Uh, I wanted it to be blue. And I was playing around with some different color schemes. I've been doing that for the past few weeks now, where I'm kind of, instead of going for the usual color schemes that I'm using, instead of like, um, or Googling for something, I'm trying to figure things out, trying to play with my pens, trying to um, get to know them again, because it was a while since I colored, as you might have noticed on the lack of videos. But, um, so I chose to go with B21 as my lightest, which I now have a refill for, so I can use it as much as I want, which is just awesome. Um, and I'm going in and kind of doing all of the shading. Now, this is going to be a very dark or mid blue um, jacket. So uh, I'm just going in with the lightest color because I want to make sure that I get the shadows at the right places uh, before going in with the darker colors. I also want to kind of add a little bit of color on each little piece that is her petticoat or 
I want to call it a petticoat. It's probably not the one, but a jacket then. Sorry. Um, I, I want to add a little bit of blue on every little part so that I'm sure that I'm not missing them. Uh, or, you know, the dreadful coloring the wrong color at places because that happens always for me. Um, so um, that is what I'm doing here. And I kind of liked it. I kind of, it was very soothing. And you see, I'm going very slowly. Uh, this is one of the perks or side effects of uh, watching me do it in real time. You can see me doing uh, how, kind of see how I'm thinking, okay, where I'm gonna put this and where I'm gonna put that. And by doing that in the lightest color as the first layer, the coloring will then go a little bit faster. There is a few things that I'm doing differently with this image than I have done in a while. And that is the first is I'm going actually light, going from light through all colors down to the dark. And then I'm going from dark through all colors down to the light. Um, and I kind of feel like I'm building up the color in a different way and it kind of looks better when I'm doing that. Um, at the end, I actually realized now when editing, at the end, I'm actually not doing that on the bottom part of the dress. And I don't feel that it blended as good as the upper part. But at the same time, the lower part has a lot of more uh, light color than the top part. So I'm, I'm, I don't know which is which. Um, I went in with my B45. And that is also the second part that I've done very differently from this is that I'm going in in smaller parts. Instead of going in with the dark color, the next color all over her dress and then taking the color after that all over her dress, I'm choosing to go in in smaller sections. Um, and this is because I want to have a better blend and I also don't want to lose myself. I kind of want to concentrate on a smaller area. This is a huge image. So um, to, to kind of, this is printed so that she is about five and a half inches high. Um, when I print, I go in Photoshop and, and put all my images because I have Photoshop and it's ready for readable available for me and I don't have word so I I use Photoshop for all my printing um, and when I go in there I go in and I do a grid layout there's an automatic grid layout and you can choose how many grids you want and I usually split an A4 into four pieces uh, this cardstock comes as A4s so that is what I'm printing on um, and uh, in Photoshop, I can see the grid lines. They won't print, they just visual helps. Uh, and it splits, it has a little bit of a gutter and a little bit of a corner uh, or edge on the paper. And then I can put the images because then I know that they always get printed. And, and um, I also know that how they, how about they will fit onto a card base. So I put her in there and I was thinking like, yeah, maybe I should do her smaller. And then I realized she's so detailed that I need to make her this size. So she ended actually being put up on a card that is um, half, the, half uh, a letter. So it's twice the size of an A2 card base, um, which is pretty huge, but uh, I kind of liked the end result. So. It, it's okay. And I did get, uh, I could actually fit in a really big sentiment at the side of her so that I got kind of a really complete image. And I, I really enjoyed that. So back to the coloring. Um, after going in uh, with the B45, I went in with the B66 uh, and basically looked at the B44, felt do the B66 needs to be a little bit larger or does it need to be smaller? And then I went to B97, which is the darkest color I'm using. And I thought the same way. 
and then I went from the B97 to the B66 uh, and just blended out that B97 uh, and giving a little bit extra with the B66. I'm doing the same here with the B45 where my concentration is I'm going from the darker and pushing that carefully out towards the lighter. Um, actually trying to make it sure that I'm covering the whole dark part. Um, it's easier to blend if you actually go over the color and also for me because I'm using colors that have different n n like purples and a little bit of grayish tones um, they will look better together when you go over with the B45 over the B66 and the um, 97. With the B21 I'm a little bit more careful because it's such a light color so if I start going over too much of the dark I will push it too much into the paper and you will get kind of a texture instead of the smooth blend it will look uh, a little bit splotchy actually um, which in some cases looks really good but in this case I was after to get more of a um, velvety feel of it and I hope that is what I convey um, on the image. And then I have finished off kind of the top part of her dress. And I'm going to go through this dress bit by bit by bit. And one of the reasons why I'm doing it in small chunks, I said it's, it's easier to blend. And the reason why it's easier to blend is because you keep the moisture in the paper Alcohol, uh, the the solution of a marker, Copic or Pro marker or whatever marker you have is when it's an alcohol marker, it is actually alcohol in it. It's the solvent. It's what kind of makes the pigment move. And uh, because of that, alcohol evaporates. So when it comes in contact with uh, oxygen, it kind of just yeah, evaporate. I don't really know chemically how it properly works because I just took it for granted. But basically it, um, it dries very fast because of the alcohol. And therefore, if you want the paper to stay moist while you are coloring, you want to color small areas. And those small areas, by doing the small areas, you will get a much better blend um, and here I'm going in with the B45 a little bit extra because I felt I needed the B40, I needed a little bit more darkness just at that uh, corner and then I just blended it out with the, with the B21. And that is also important to think about. Don't feel that you need to have a certain amount of layers. Um, just being aware that the more layers you add the darker it will be. Uh, also a thing you can think about is that when you're working with very light colors, especially the grays, they will go on looking darker than they are. Uh, and a lot of the uh, light color is that way because the, um, the paper will darken a little bit from the moisture and when the moisture uh, or, or the alcohol evaporates, the moisture disappears and the paper will go back looking as white as it did before, but with that very thin layer of pigment. A lighter pen has less pigment. That is how a uh, alcohol pen works, is that the less um, pigment you put in it, the uh, lighter the color so it's basically just a mixture and when you are looking at families uh, like the B90s for example, B91, B93, B95, the big difference in that is that there are more alcohol with less pigment in the 91 versus say the 95 where you have a whole bunch more pigment 
and less alcohol. And if you go to the 97, you really, or 99, you have a lot of pigment and just a little bit of alcohol. And in the 9090 series, it should be basically the same pigment right through it. Um, I can't promise it is because I don't work at Copic, but I think they're trying to make um, those families when it says uh, for it says the 90s. If you look at the number nine, it should have visually at least the same amount of color in it. Um, you look at it, the, the numbers, how the numbers work is that the last number, like the seven in 97, that number shows you um, the strength of the color, the saturation, which basically is if it's light or if it's dark in, um, in the strongness of the color. While the first one is telling you if it's bright or if it's gray. So the higher the number is, the more towards the gray spectrum you have. And the smaller the number, like the B00, is really, really bright blue. Uh, very, very light, but very, very bright blue. The B01, B02 is a very, very bright blue but in the mid-range of um, light to dark, if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. Yeah. But anyhow, that was uh, the... Um, I would probably go on these kind of tangents because it's starting to get late and this is going to be one hour and 45 minutes and we are 17 minutes in. Yay. <laughs> Anyhow, so you're probably gonna get a lot of strange uh, information in these kind of videos. Usually I try to uh, add, I actually do add the same information in several different videos, especially with the real-time coloring videos, because the, it's uh, first, you learn a lot from uh, repetition um, by listening to people saying the same thing over and over again you will get it, uh, you will remember it, and it will stick with you. Um, also, uh, it's nice to hear the same information in different kinds of contexts, because then you can kind of learn that you can apply that information to all of these different contexts. Um, so, yeah. Now we're going to talk a little bit about folds because that is, this whole dress is just folds. One of the reasons why I've been scared of this image, and I'm, I'm gonna be fully honest, I think I printed it maybe five or six times before. I have colored it with Copics. I have colored it with pencils. Um, I might have shared the start of a pencil coloring on Bristol board once. <laughs> uh, and it was probably two years ago if I did. But otherwise, I don't think I ever have shared this image because I never felt that I made it justice. Um, I really love the image and it works awesomely together with the Make It Crafty Folds tutorial. Um, so uh, if, you, if you want to learn more about for example, coloring folds. Um, Make It Crafty has a whole bunch of ebooks uh, which Zoe, the owner, has created. And they are very detailed and they have so much information that you can read it through several times and every time you'll find something new. It's super good. It's super good. And I'm sorry if you hear someone blowing his nose because I don't know if you can hear that through this, but my boyfriend's home and he's sick and I'm close to the door, but you can't always, always, you, you can't, I can't go out and say, tell him he can't blow his nose. He's very, he has a really bad cold. I too, but not as bad as he got. Anyhow, the full tutorial, back to that. Um, 
And all the tutorials that Zoe has, uh, they are very much going into how things work, showing you why a fold would look like it does. Uh, it has a whole bunch of um, things you can practice on, just simple uh, coloring uh, random folds. But she also, with every tutorial, you get a number of different images and you get a step-by-step um, -step tutorial on all those images on how to color them. So I would really, really recommend the tutorials and they're super affordable. Um, they're, they range, I think they range from 15 to... 30 40 dollars and the ones that cost more they're so much they're so full of information uh yeah you could spend weeks playing with them so i do recommend those tutorials if you want to learn more about folds uh what i've been doing here with my folds there are a few things that i've taken artistic um freedom with to uh, create a little bit more show show a little bit more and the few things that I've done is you see that a lot of my folds here have a rim light and the rim light is when you have like a little teeny tiny line just at the edge of the fold so basically the fold is supposed to be rounded and should basically down to the edge be dark but I have moved the edge a little bit and giving it a little bit of a white line and I'm using the rim light to um, separate between the cast shadow and the rounded shadow and by doing that I'm uh, kind of both giving it a little bit more dimension but also you can really see where the different folds lay and um, when you're working with folds you work with rounded shadows uh, cast shadows and in this ca case rim light those are the three kind of main parts of a fold um, if you really 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 want to know how to do folds uh, watching um, fashion magazines is a very good place to look at at cool folds because they photograph the clothes so that you're gonna see the clothes perfectly so therefore you can really get those beautiful cast shadows and such on and rounded shadows and really showing how the clo clothes look but uh, to make a very sim <laughs> to make it simple, a rounded shadow is uh, when you have an object that um, have a shadow on itself because it's um, it facing the light. So on the opposite side, it will have that rounded shadow. A rounded shadow is very specific for round, round or oval. Um, rounded shapes basically uh, like the dress here she has these really beautiful f folds that goes uh, from her bum down to the big bow um, and what all of those are rounded it's like you uh, take take the fabric and you pull it in at the top and the bottom um, but keep it soft in the middle and therefore that can get like a sausage very scientific scientific thing a sausage um, so what I've started to do here is I'm adding a rounded shadow um, which is also a little bit of a cast shadow because you get the cast shadows from the opposite fold but it also a little bit of a rounded shadow because you have the fold itself is so round and then I'm adding the rounded shadow on the opposite side with a rim light and the rim light is because you're gonna see the difference bec between 
the um, cast shadow on the next coming uh, fold. So that's kind of the idea. And um, also in a lot of the pieces here, I'm working a lot with all the rounded shadows. And then when I have gone in coloring most of it uh, or fully colored it, I go in with a darker pen and do uh, some more of the cast shadows uh, because cast shadows are usually a lot darker um, de than the rounded shadows and it's also very it doesn't you don't blend it out the way you blend a rounded shadow um, I usually take the darkest color and then I'm just carefully just at the edge of it I go out with a lighter color so that it doesn't get you don't get a very stark edge not a strict hard edge it's just a little bit softed so it's almost hard yeah I have strange ways of describing things I'm hoping you understand it somehow you understand it but I, I'm so I'm going in with those kind of drop shadows or cast shadows just after I've colored it all because then I don't have to work around the shadows it makes it a little bit easier to color actually uh, however you then need to break down the different shadows in your head to make th make them work for you um, and it took me some time to really do that I had a grasp like an inherent grasp of how things looked I had an idea I understood I could color an object but I didn't think about how the different shadows lay so I couldn't break them apart I had to do them all at one time I knew that it's gonna be dark here and it's gonna be dark here and it's gonna be dark here I didn't uh, think that think about those dark areas as different kinds of shadows sort of yeah and I will be drinking water throughout this video because it's one hour and 45 minutes and we're about 27 minutes in so um, I work piece by piece when I'm doing this um, I didn't think about things much because after you have colored your first first of these little fabric sausages you kind of know how to do them um, you kind of realize you figure out where you want to put the shadow but um, there were a few things I thought about when I did these specific ones and that is um, if you haven't realized it yet I'm putting the uh, light source in front of her uh, like she's she's holding the frog up towards the light basically and that will mean mean that the sausages at the back of her towards her bum will have more darkness than the sausages uh, closer to the dress part so that is also one of those things that i was thinking about when adding one of these colors yeah so um when you keep on watching me coloring those cute little uh, fabric sausages um i thought i'd talk about a little bit something else for a while mm. um throughout last year i did i think two crafty coffee the whole idea was i was all set up i am going to do crafty coffee yay and then life happened um but i concentrated on the wrong things in 2017 that's something i feel that i did i wanted to uh, do a lot of um i wanted to try everything i wanted to do all of the different crafts i already am a multi-crafter and have been for a very long time but i kind of put a little bit too much energy 
into my other crafts and too little energy into card making and um, I've been going through a whole bunch of different things uh, this last couple of months and I sat down and started coloring and found that this is one of the things that de-stresses me the most that helps me to kind of get into some kind of a meditative state and, and gets me breathing calmly and when I get up after having a real good coloring session like this which was a couple of hours I'm I'm so more relaxed and I can tackle the world in a whole different way so I'm hoping to be able to make more videos and more um, card making stuff uh, this upcoming year um, and you are also seen me uh, for the past few videos I'm trying to get a better mix of a coloring and card making so that you can get both of me um, I've, I've been kind of um, juggling with the with the idea of going either way either just coloring or just card making but I think that would be putting a part of me outside the channel and I don't really want to do that um, I kind of started this channel to share my love of card making and coloring so that is what I'm going to do um, so I'm trying to uh, figure out trying to make a good blend of, of pure simple cards and then uh, some more really in-depth coloring parts like this and then on the third part I want to add a little bit more real tutorials where I go through the coloring like a coloring tutorial where you really get all the details I also have some other ideas of a basic series that I want to come up I have um, I sat down one day and just started writing um, in, on a Trello board um, a whole bunch of different ideas that I could use and I think I have about 10 so far just for the basic series and the basic series would be smaller videos uh, a little bit simpler videos um, talking about things like how to make a card base and how to which uh, paper cutter to choose and stuff like that because I think uh, those kind of things are really really fun so and I do want to bring back crafty coffee uh, with um, more m more of even more interactive having having it even more interactive so that the the questions that you ask will be answered a little bit sooner than they have been but also where um, I put questions to you that you can answer and, and yeah that would be that would be a lot of fun um, I kind of have one planned for the new year um, in the beginning of January um, but I'm been I've been struggling a little bit uh, this the end of this year I um, I've been needing to step off some medications because I need to take tests which uh, kind of makes me go into menopause again I have medication that keeps me I eat hormones so that I don't get menopausal symptoms I'm still in menopause so uh, it, it's not like I can have babies or anything but um, when I'm treated I don't have the symptoms and um, there's a, there's a whole it's not only the menopausal symptoms that is the reason why you need to be treated when you go into menopause too early like I did but that's another thing um, I, I've gone off the medication and when I did that um, my migraine started going haywire again and I've been off it almost three months now so when it hits three months I'm gonna be able to get back on my hormone treatment and it's gonna be a little bit better um, also, I, I'm going through some stressful situations 
Um, I just recently lost my job. Um, still, uh, I'm still employed uh, until the 31st of January. And then I need to find something else to do. Um, I am very, 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 very lucky. And I reach out on social media and I already have a couple of leads for new jobs. So I'm not worried that I'm not gonna have a job. But for me, um, changing jobs are tough. It's something I want to do because I want to work on myself. But also it's very tough because I have social anxieties um, that might not show through to other people. But I have panic attacks when I'm new to a job, I have panic attacks almost every day when I get home. So it's not it's not easy changing jobs. You can look at my social profile and you're like, yeah, your life's so easy. It's not really. It's not really. It's not that hard either, but it's not that easy. Um, so I have all these stress things. And on top of that, I have a really bad cold, which Christopher's also got. So my migraine is going haywire, haywire, haywire. So I'm a little bit late with this video. It was supposed to go up um, the morning, the 29th. And um, I'm not sure, really sure when it will go up, if it's the evening, the 29th or the morning, the 30th. It all depends on how long this voiceover will take <laughs> um, and how long it will take to export and uh, write the blog posts, but yeah. So I'm a little bit late with this and um, I am having a hard time sticking to the same thought of reference just because my I have a really, really bad migraine right now. But everything for the art. Now I really want to get this out because I really, really like um, the image. And by the way, if I haven't told you yet, this is going to be covered with glitters. Um, a lot of glitters uh, and not real glitter but a glitter effect that makes it look like glitter without adding glitter to the card and um, if you are watching this before the new year you still have an opportunity to enter the glitter coloring challenge over at Makey Crafty and I do recommend do it come join us you can win things and you can try out new things. The two things I love with the Make It uh, Crafty color tutorials is just that um, not only whether or not you win the prize, which is a gift card to Make It Crafty, whether or not you win the prize, you still win something because you are trying something you might not have tried before or you have been too scared to try. Um, I started with, at the Make It Crafty DT in, I think it is 2013. It might be 2014. It says that I have the date on, um, uh, on my blog. Um, I have all of my design teams and all of that information on my blog. But um, I've been working and doing these kind of cards and coloring with her, with Zoe since then. And um, I started my mar marker um, kind of addiction by seeing Zoe's creations and playing in her coloring coloring challenges and what I love with her coloring challenges is that they are actually are challenges it is trying something new something you might not have dared to try before um, or if it is something you actually already do then maybe you can challenge yourself a little bit extra and so he's really really good at doing that with us in the DT team and challenging challenging us to kind of think out of the box um, not making the same card over and over again uh, thinking about new color schemes new new stuff all the time which I really really she is a very she pushes people in a good way um, 
I love her to bits. She's a wonderful person, okay? Um, and she does that in her Facebook group too. So if you're not in her Facebook group, you have to go there. You have to join in with us. It's not, um, also what I like with it, it's not one of those groups that is where you get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of people sharing stuff and disappear in the, um, with all the people. Instead, you get, you have um, the whole the whole group who just are very nice and very giving and very um, loving. And, and you should be there with us. If you like coloring, come and join Zoe. Um, so the uh, challenge that is going on just right now if you're still in December 2017, is glitters. And um, I have a tutorial on that on my YouTube and on my blog, which I did in the beginning of December. Uh, it's a three video feature uh, thingy where you can have the card making video, you have a coloring video, and then as the last part is actually a coloring tutorial where I go I uh, show you how to do a matte um, bauble uh, with two different kinds of shading and the glittered bauble um, two different kinds of shading. Now the glitter bauble that I do there I'm actually using Copics for the dotting technique. I'm doing the same kind of technique on this dress but in the tutorial I'm using my Copics so then you only need your white gel pen and your Copics and that's all you need to get the glitter effect. While on this dress I'm actually using the don't use the Copics to dot instead I'm using gel pens to dot and the gel pens I'm using are metallic and glitter gel pens uh, I just have a mixture of them. Some are a toy, like the Copic version, like a speaker, a toy speaker, I think they're called. And then um, I also have some of the jelly roll pens. And I need to get more because when I went through this, this was also a kind of a fun thing. The reason why I chose blue from the beginning for this dress was because I was going through my gel pens and like half of them had dried out because I haven't used them. Kind of annoying, but that's how it is. Um, some pens are really, really good. Like the Copics, for example, they really don't dry out. Uh, if you have a dry pen, you either have used it a lot or you have cracked your cap. Or haven't if you have to put the cap on thoroughly but sometimes you can crack your cap and the best way to figure out if your cap is cracked but doesn't always show because it's usually the inner part of the cap who's, which is cracked is to use a dark marker if, if it's not a dark marker use a dark marker on the inside and then um, clean that out carefully with alcohol and you will see how the dark color will kind of seep into the crack and then you have a cracked um, lid and you can't really do anything about that. I usually just switch out the pen. Um, one thing you see when you have a cracked uh, crack lid is um, if you get like crystals onto your nibs. That is one of, one of the things that kind of show that. But yeah, I was talking about the glitter pens. Uh, but um, so Copics don't dry out with well, glitter pens do um, and you don't need to buy any expensive things uh, just buy the regular kind of gel pen packs you can find in your grocery stores in the kind of child's apartment depart department not apartment department can't talk uh, those are the best pens for it. I do have um, mostly like jelly roll pens and stuff because uh, I gave my glitter pens away 
because I was stupid. Uh, I bought one of those nice packs, really big packs, and I ended up giving it to my sister. I should have kept it. Um, so I just have bought one or two when I've been needing them. Um, and I usually don't use them that much. I uh, mostly just use my Copics. Now back to the coloring for a little while. Um, the folds at the lower part is very different than the folds at the upper part. And you can see that because uh, you can think about it like the the material that is used is a little bit stiff. It's like having a soft paper or something when when you're folding it. And this is also why those sausages kind of keep the way they keep is because they're more of a they're more stiff. So when you fold them together, they keep that little sausage part. But that also means that when you come to the bottom part of it, it will be much more straight. It's like when you fold a paper a little bit, it will not round as fabric. Fabric really wants to kind of flow, while this fabric, uh, these folds kind of show that this fabric that she has is kind of a stiff fabric. Um, so then I'm thinking about it a little bit differently. Also, as you see, when I have, um, first of all, I've colored this I, all over the rest of the image. I went light to dark and then dark to light. Here I did the uh, shadows first in the light and then I went dark to light, just straight off. And I don't feel that it has the same blend as the previous one has. I, I wished I did um, did it back and forth like I did for the rest of the dress because this specific color scheme work better that way. Um, that could be a, a good thing to think about is that the technique you're putting down the colors is very important if you want it to end up having the same color scheme as someone else does it. So. Um, when I look at, um, go, go to people's blogs and I see the Copic list, I usually try out their combinations in different techniques to figure out which technique they used to get the effect that they are using. But also here you see that um, I'm adding darkness at the edges um, kind of making it look like it bent outwards. All of them are bent outwards. Sadly, they are at the wrong side there. I just realized that I haven't really sh shaded them right, or have I? Yeah, they're shaded right. I'm just stupid right now. You know, it's starting to get late. No, but the, sh the shading I'm doing is to make it look like they're rounded uh, outwards. All of them are rounded outwards um, so that they um, they get that little light in the middle and then you have the darkness because of them either being uh, rounded away from the light or having a shadow from the previous um, the previous folds. I just almost try to drink my microphone. I usually don't drink anything when I'm doing voiceovers. I try to do them from start to finish, just straight off. But one hour and 45 minutes. How many times can I say that in this video? You can count them. I don't know. I won't. Uh, <laughs> but um, we're 50 minutes in. So you have me for about a 55 minutes more. Nice. Um, what more can I talk about? I don't know. I can talk about my kitties. Have you met my kitties? They're adorable. Um, I think I have shown Leia in one of the um, Crafty Coffees. 
By the way, this is where I'm going in and doing the cast shadows from the bow to kind of make it stand out a little bit. I felt it was um, kind of just sitting inside the dress and I realized that it was because I hadn't shaded enough around the bow. So I just built up the colors and did a little adding a little shade shading. I'm actually going in the B45 with this shading so it's not the darkest color um, it's actually next to the lightest color um, but I wanted to add, add a more darkness so I get a little bit higher of a contrast um, to build up. Also I'm covering up some of the folds on the bow because I didn't think they looked that good. You can always do that. You can always go over with color and build more color. It's quite fun. Really. It's actually really fun. Anyhow, Leah and Gizmo. I have two kitties. They're actually siblings from the same litter. So um they're Gaia <laughs> Gaia. Look, <laughs> I mixed them together. Um Leia is the biggest sister. She weighs in at four and a half kilos. She's white with one blue and one brown eye. Um, she's super adorable. I love her two bits. Um, but she's she's the bigger sister, so she's kind of a little bit of a um, I don't know. Uh, she's not as social as Gizmo is, and she wants things her own way. She's very specific with how you're gonna pet her and. Uh, when she's gonna be in your lap and stuff like that while Gizmo um, which is the little brother from the litter which is a sand colored kitty um, and he's very laid back they're mixed breeds and they have Persian um, Norwegian forest cat uh, they got Birma and they got Ragdoll in them. And with Gizmo, it's very obvious that he is Ragdoll and Norwegian forest cat. Uh, she ha he has the size of the Norwegian forest cat um, and kind of walks like a dog, which is actually very similar to a Norwegian forest cat. Um, and then... Um, and then he has the rag doll. When you pick him up, he's a six kilo cat kitty and he doesn't have an extra, it's not extra weight. He's just a very big cat. And you pick him up and he's all loose in his body and it's hard to hold him sometimes. Um, and he wants to lay in your lap constantly, constantly if he could. Uh, well, Leia, she's um, much. She's she's more of a Persian. She has very long fur, but it's more like a Persian fur. But both of them have super cute noses, like button noses. I, uh, yeah, they're they're adorable. And by the way, every time you see kitty hair on my desk, that is why they shed like crazy, and I can't do that much about. It. So I have hair everywhere, but they're so adorable, so it's almost worth it. So um, I'm starting with some uh, golden details on the dress. Because I had chosen to go with the blue, um, I kind of got stuck there, like what am I going to use for colors for the rest of the dress? I googled. 1700 blue dress that was what i googled for and i found one which actually wasn't blue it was more like a teal but yeah um that had this golden ish silk dress as the bottom i'm like i i want that that looked cool so i played around a little with my pens and found that E50 and the lightest of my E40s would make an awesome golden color and it worked awesome with this 
color scheme. Um, colors are very, they depend on each other very much. Uh, if you put, you, you take four colors and then you pair them up two and two, and then you switch them out, you will see that the tones in the color will actually differ. Um, so when you share them, put them between each other, they will look different. Um, I have, I don't know if I made a video of it, but I do have a card with some Little Miss Muffet stamps, stamp. I did a bunch of um, mermaids, I might have a video on it actually, um, this fall, um, she had, it was a blog hop of some sort I think that I was joining into and yeah for the faces, she had done um, faces and I was in a blog hop and I used uh, the E40s um, on the weapons and as details on the clothes um, the mid E40s and uh, she asked me oh how did you get that beautiful golden tone and I'm like I used the E40s and she's like no way no way that doesn't that isn't the E40s and it was the E40s and it's just because it's placed it depends on which color you place it by um, but in this in this case I'm using the E40 2, E41, and I think I'm just topping it off with the E50, I think I'm jump, yeah, I'm jumping the E40 because it has like a grayer base than the E50 has, so uh, I'm using the E42, the E41 and the E50, and I will be going in with the E43 also on the ruffles to give it a little bit more depth because these colors blend pretty good with each other um, and uh, I wanted to have a little bit more contrast uh, in the folds on the dress but I'm actually not adding it to the rest of her. I'm using the same colors at the edges of her dress that you might have already seen um, where the E42 is just at the edges of every fold and then just blending it to the middle and uh, it makes it look like I have like, golden details on it even though they're brown uh, so you can actually play a lot with color that way to make them look look that look like there are something different and the E50 um, it has a yellowish undertone which I really really like working with um, because um, it helps bring things out. Uh, I use the E50 very often as the uh, lightest color of skin, especially when it comes towards more towards the summer because um, the sun will help bring out the ye more yellow tone in your skin during the summer, while during the winter uh, as the pigment kind of fades the redness of your um, veins and stuff, capillaries I think they're called, those teeny teeny tiny blood veins, um, they will be show, show through much more as the pigment fades and therefore you will have a much pinker tone uh, during the winter and therefore I use the E000 as the lightest color during the winter when I color because I do that. I change my skin colors that I based on my own. Um, but yeah, the E42, the E43 is, or the E40s, you know, I love the E40s. They are my beau. They are my friend, my wonderful companion. And there is um, very, very rarely a card without the E40s. I actually had to go on an adventure a couple of weeks ago when I realized my E41 was out. So I picked up my second E41 and then discovered it was out too. And I have all the other refills except the E41 because the last time I was at the pen store they were out. 
And yeah, my store where I buy my Copic is called Pen Store. It's called penstore.com. It's a Swedish store and it's they do have a physical store here in Stockholm. Uh, so when I feel that I really need to get my things fast, I go there. If I feel that I want them a little bit slower, kind of a day or two later, I actually go and get them there, but I order online. Um, and then I can just order online and get them here, but why pay for shipping when you can go and go through a pen store and pick up all the things you don't need. Um, but uh, I went there and I got a, a bunch of new refills. I think I have about 20. 25 or something like that. I don't have that many refills and Of course, I want them all just like I have the full collection. I want the full collection of refills But it's expensive Very expensive. So I'm waiting with them for a little while But um, Whenever I run out run out of colors, uh, I do get the opportunity to play around with uh, new colors that I haven't used in a while. Um, even though I try to go through my collection and use all the colors in some uh, shape or form because I don't want them to feel left out. I do believe my pens have emotions. No, I don't really, but I still don't want them to feel left out. Yeah. So, uh, um, so I try to rotate through them anyhow, but when pens run out, I do have an opportunity to rotate a little bit more. However, when the pens you have rotated to also run out, then you are in a trouble because you have to go and get some more pens. And I do have, um, it's not just next door to my job, I need to be on a little bit of an adventure to go to the pen store, but it's kind of worth it. A little bit anyhow. So yeah, and, and you can keep your fingers crossed or, or hold your thumbs for me. Pen store uh, is actually having a, um, ha have uh, asked people because they have a job application out there and it's not a full-time job so it, it's not part of the ones I'm doing for myself because I don't have a job right now or I don't from the 31st but that's another story um no but um it, it's a, a part-time job uh, I think it's about eight hours um, a week uh, and it's about testing new pen supplies and I'm like one to really, it's just a two months application and they only have one position. But I did send in all my information and I'm really hoping that I will get it because, yeah, playing with pens, mm, that would be a brilliant job, wouldn't it? It would be an awesome job, just coloring all day. Um, you see, you see, this is what I'm doing here, coloring all day. But this is where I kind of figured that, yeah, I might have gone in a little bit too much with the darker tones and that skirt doesn't have enough dimension. So I'm taking the 43 and as i am been coloring for a while on these pieces, most of the places it's kind of wet. Um, so I'm, I'm just going in and just coloring the whole skirt. Uh, and also these colors that I'm working with, um, different colors will blend differently. And the E40s blend, especially from 43 and down to 40, they bl blend very, very well because they don't have such a big difference between the different colors. And because of that, you don't have to think as hard about keeping the paper wet. Instead, you can just really go in and color, 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 color with one color and then go over with the next. And this is one of the few color combinations I know that really works that way 
for bigger pieces because um, they blend wonderfully. And you can sort of see when I'm adding here that the paper is a little bit wet because it automatically blends a little bit. Um, this is also why you want it wet because it will kind of seep more gradually into the paper in some areas, especially at the edges. So it will sort of blend a little bit by itself if the paper is wet or saturated with ink. Um, I know that there is a technique out there to start by coloring your area with uh, the colorless marker and then adding the colors on top of that. Uh, however, what you have to think about when you are doing that is that you are saturating the paper with wetness, so the color will kind of lie on top of it. Um, also, uh, you will get it much, much lighter because not only will it, the color lie a half a bit on top of it, but when they, it starts seeping, it starts mixing with that alcohol, so it will be a lighter tone of what you have put down. So if you really want to work with really, really, really light colors, then adding the colorless blender in the beginning can actually help you to get it even lighter than you had it before or than the pen actually is. But when you are working with darker colors, you can get issues with splotchiness and such because you don't have the same control over the pigment when the paper is that wet while when you are wetting it with a pen that have a pigment, um, you will mix it with the other pigment, pigment, so you won't lose as much pigments and as it won't have the tendency to become splotchy. I hope I did under, I, I hope, I, I just realized that that might just, just been too mon many words, but yeah, I hope you understand what I'm thinking or how, what I'm saying, or yeah, because I don't think you can read my mind, or can you? Hmm. Um. I then just go over with the different uh, brown colors on top of that to blend it out um, to get that detail. I'm actually not very um, detailed when doing the ruffles on the skirt. And mostly because I don't want it to be too detailed. I want the shadows to be very soft all through the skirt because I'm afraid that if I would give too much detail to the skirt, uh, you would, your eyes would kind of zoom in to the skirt and nowhere else. I don't mind it zooming in to the back of the dre of the jacket because it does have a lot of details already, uh, but I don't want you to start looking just at the, those ruffles. So that's also the idea of why I'm not adding too many details uh, on the skirt um, as on the jacket. So um, I do have sort of ideas with every little detail uh, on one of these, on the images when I work. But I also have days when I'm just coloring because that color was a nice one. And then I don't have any, I don't do any research, I don't do anything, I'm just coloring. I have those days too. And um, I like both of the ways. So, yeah. Then we're coming to the frog. It's a very, very quick coloring. I'm using Y97 and I'm dabbing on the color. Then I'm dabbing, he's so little. So because he's so little, the color will bl like automatically blend with itself um, when you're doing um, a, a careful dabbing like that. And by dabbing, you're keeping a little bit of the integrity in the dabs so that he is a little bit bumpy I kind of want to keep him a little bit bumpy, even though he's very, very small. And now we come to the face. 
I'm using the same colors that I always use when I do skin. Don't worry, there will be different ones coming up. Uh, starting actually um, just uh, next year, because I do have a card already done and recorded. I just need to edit that video and get it up um, with, a, with a dark skin color. Uh, where I actually worked very, very hard uh, on getting a skin tone, a dark skin tone that I really liked because I wanted a a very, a very, very dark skin color. So hopefully, hopefully you will like that too. But uh, here I'm using the E04 as my darkest. I'm blending it out with the E11. I'm not adding a lot of details in her face. I'm actually just adding mostly kind of a little little bit of rounded shadow on his on her cheek um and then just the drop shadows and cast shadows and just shadows um because i again her face isn't the detail it's such a small detail in the image there are other things that um you kind of want your eye to fall on. I love her face, it's not that, but it's such a small part of the image. Um, and I felt that I didn't need to add so much on that. The eye, I added a little bit of the uh, B45 and B21 because she has a very, very small eye. And then a little bit of the B63 in the white of her eyeball to, um, act as a shadow from her um, eye lids, the hair on her, where you put the mascara on. Sometimes words just don't come to me. Lashes, that's the word, lashes, just like a whip. Um, <laughs> so just under the lashes, uh, I used a little bit, bit of the B63. Then I used the B63 as a highlight color for her hair. Now I'm coloring over that purple uh, afterwards, but uh, it will lend a little bit of that purplish blue will kind of look through the color that I'm adding on top of it. Um, so you will get a black hair that looks a little bit blue and also I get a automatic kind of here is where I want the shine to be. So it's easier to add the darkness. Now you don't see what I'm doing right now. So I'm doing her hair and when I'm doing flicks, I'm doing, doing them with a pen straight up. And this is why you don't see anything because you can't see my nib because I don't want to put it, um, at an angle, which I do otherwise. Kind of uses the pen differently depending on what I'm coloring. If I'm coloring, um, like blending, I usually have the pen a little bit um, at an angle because then I can use more of the brush side to color in more area and also kind of blend the color together. While when I'm doing flicks, like I do when I work with hair, I'm doing it with the pen just straight up because then I can get the tiniest, tiniest dots and lines. And uh, that keep, you need practice, a lot of practice when you're doing flakes. Um, and I've gotten it through coloring a lot of hair. I love coloring hair, but sometimes this is one of those that I had a hard time figuring out which part is supposed to be hair, which part is supposed to be um, kind of air, uh, how much can you see through those curls, um, how much will be hair and how much will be like holes right through and um, I have always had a problem with it all the time, all, all the five, six times I tried to color this image, the hair has always been one of those that I, really don't know how to do. 
But I'm starting with a 100 black. Now, black comes with two pens, 100 and 110. They are different. You can see difference. It's a marginal difference, but there are difference between them. But I usually pick up the pen I um, have the closest. I have them in the same cupboard hole. I have pen cupboards that I made from cardboard. Uh, and you can put the pens into the cupboard holes. And in the cupboard hole I have a bunch of pens. And the black are in the same one. So I pick up the one that I just pick up. Especially when... Um, the blackness isn't super important. It's just that it's going to be darker than a C10, for example. Then it's not that... It's not that important which black it is. Um, so if you are just going to get one black, go with either. They're similar. Not the same, but very similar. What I'm doing then is after I did the black going in with a C10, I'm elongating the straight flex that is on her hair to make kind of a zigzaggy shine through her hair. Um, and then I'm going and kind of rounding off all of those little curls. Guys, 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 we only have 30 minutes left. Only 30 minutes left. Um, <laughs> I have a counter that's going uh, underneath my video. So I can see how long I have gone. I'm starting to lose my voice. I do have a cold. So you have to bear with me. Um, but it's kind of nice seeing how long I have gotten. But I think this is the longest. Yeah, it, it's the longest voiceover I, I ever made. Uh, I don't know half of it. I don't remember half of what I said in the beginning of the video, but yeah, that's how it is. Uh, but I'm going in with uh, the C8. After I've done the C10 and added like rounding detail on a lot of the little curls, going in with the uh, C10, uh, I'm adding more of those kind of dark parts on the curls. I'm adding some darkness uh, behind some of the curls um, so that uh, you can see you can see difference you can get a depth in her hair um, I thought I, I think thinked long and hard um, when choosing her hair color I really didn't know what color I was going to use um, and I felt that, well, I can't go with one of the ones I usually do, which is the E40s, because I just happen to love that kind of brown tone. Yeah, I, I've told you before, I love the E40s and I can use the E40s for most things. But I felt that because I've used the E40s in such a big part of her dress, I didn't want to add it in her hair too because I felt it would um, make her too flat. Um, because even if I have dimension in my coloring, you can still get a flat feeling if you're using uh, two similar colors for very separate things. So um, in the end, I decided the black and this was the scariest thing I've done in a long time when it comes to coloring because I really, really love how the jacket turned out. It it looks almost the way I wanted it to. I still have some, yeah, but I probably could have made that differently. But I think um, that is just me being picky. Um, and I think that if I wasn't picky, I wouldn't evolve as a colorist. Um, but still... Um, it turned out so good, so when choosing a color and choosing black as her hair color it was really scary to put down that first part. Um, but I actually kind of like how it turned out. It, it really gave her life somehow. I don't know. 
Um, I'm, I'm going over it with the grey pen and I'm one of those who don't really do the white highlights. Uh, I know that when I started doing Copic colouring, uh, white highlights, having um, the lightest of the highlights being white, basically leaving the paper uh, seen through, it was one of the biggest things to do. Um, so I think most most of us did use that way of uh, adding highlights. But I feel now that the only time I really use white highlights is uh, when I do um, my platinum uh, wh white hair with the E40s because um, I want to have something lighter than the E40 for the lightest color. So that's basically white. But here, uh, as with many dark colors, I'm actually adding a um, color that is pretty dark, but it looks a lot lighter because I'm pairing it with other dark colors. Um, or is it a color when it's black and gray? Or is it just pigment? I don't know. That is a hard one. I, w I want to color. I want to call black a color. What was I? What I was going to say. But well, I'm just making my little ringlets round, um, filling in with the C6. Like a C6? Is that a song? Or is it B6? Or something like that well it starts a song in my head anyhow um but yeah that's i think everything i have to talk about when it comes to the hair so we can talk about the crown instead because that is what's going on next i'm using y23 on the crown i did it for the uh, frog crown also um so I, I didn't want it to be bright yellow and there's a lot of bright yellow. So I used Y23 to get a very soft yellow and then I'm using the E42 just to do a little bit of shading. I wanted to have rubies so I use R24 and then I'm adding a, speaker, a red speaker glitter pen called Garnet. And then I'm using some Jelly Roll Golden Glitter, or Metallic I think it's called. Uh, I will have everything listed in the description down below. Um, just dotting it on to give a little bit of glitter for the crown. And then I'm going to start with the glittering. So, for every... Um, yeah, it's done with the copy colouring. That was what I was going to say and then I lost the word somewhere on the long. Um, now I'm going to do the glitter effects and um, why this become a glitter dress was because of Zoe. Uh, she, um, she did a Facebook live. I used to happen to catch it. I usually don't. I'm, I'm usually working um, but I was at home that day and I ca catched it and she did the glittering and there were a few things like I, I really got this time I've seen videos because she um, there uh, there's an artist I call I think it's called Max and he has two X's on Instagram and he does Disney princesses uh, with I think both Copics uh, colored pencils and these kind of pens um, and he does them super glittery he does a lot of glitter on his dresses and I watch his videos because uh, we talked about this glittering technique um, before in the make it crafty group and also in the in the design team group but um, and um, and so we had has shown his his uh, videos before but somehow I kind of forgotten a little bit about them uh, and when I did my glitter tutorial I did a little bit of a different version because I really wanted 
uh, wanted you to be able to do the glitter effects without a lot of different pens. If you're just a copy colorist, maybe you don't want to have a whole bunch of gel pens. I don't know. Um, but uh, she did her uh, live video, which by the way, you can actually see all the live videos that Zoe has done. You can find on the in the Facebook group. Um, on the left side, there is like a menu where it will say um, like discussion, but there's also one that says videos and all of the live videos will, um, about an hour after it's been live, they will show up there and you can watch them. Um, but she did a whole bunch of coloring on a dress and then she did uh, glitter effects on it. And I'm, I just got some points of it and I, I have to try it. I have to see if I can do it. And I went through a lot of images. I had an idea of which image I was going to use. And then I saw this one and like, yeah, this is the one. There, There is nothing else. This is the one I'm going to do. So the way I'm doing glitter, uh, which is the kind of idea behind this, is that you take uh, two to three gel pens. You can probably use more than that, but you don't really need more than that. Uh, you use one that's pretty dark. Um, this dark blue actually dries a little bit lighter. Um, you can actually see it um, when you look at the dress that it has dried in some parts and hasn't in other parts so it looks a lot darker when it goes on but it does dries a little lighter which is really nice and you dot in the shadows and maybe a couple of them in the mid-tones then you go in with a mid-tone blue which in this case is my speaker baby blue um, and dot in the mid-tones and a couple of them in the lighter parts um, or a lot of them in the lighter parts. Um, you basically fill it up with with them. Uh, the things you want to think about when you are doing this kind of dotting is that you don't want it to look like you have um, uh, a pattern. You don't want to go in like straight lines or going um some of mine do happen to be in straight lines mostly because the shadows are so thin there that you can't really make them not go in straight lines but uh, most of the part i'm just doing it going sidewards upwards sidewards upwards sidewards upwards round in like these different diamond shapes ish trying not to think about it and trying to move my hand and the fingers so that I kind of get a mixture of it and therefore not getting as um, as a detailed or, or as um, more organic the way I'm adding them. And for the third part when you're doing this is to add the white gel pen which is the um the glitter basically the other ones are showing the glitter when it's not glittering the two dark pens while the white one is showing the glittering um and using white pen you can do on any color so you want to have matching colors for the dark and the mid tone and then you have the white uh, I uh, use the jelly roll pen. Now, we're gonna discuss jelly roll pens here because there are two different versions of white jelly roll pens. This is very, very important to think about because the one I'm using is the white opaque one. It's called Zero Eight Jelly Roll. And that is white opaque and will give you white dots just as this looks. There is one which is called the glaze pen, which has a shimmer in it. It goes on clear and then after a while turns white with a shimmer in it. There's a very big difference between those two. Um, the one that is the glaze pen, the jelly roll glaze, it has a shimmering cap. It's the white cap is shimmering instead of a opaque like the one I have. And um, it uh, is much harder working with it 
because of its it going on clear and then turning white. So I do recommend using this specific one. I really uh, um, I really finding that I get really nice small dots with it and I get the same dots as my other gel pens which I kind of like to match. So when you're adding your white you're adding it uh, where you have your highlights uh, a lot in those areas and then you're adding kind of random ones a little bit spread out from the highlights um, that will help you to get get it to look like it's even more glittering but it also will help you uh, to keep the uh, dimension in your coloring when you do that uh, I think I got a little bit scared ha here because it goes on really, really dark, this pen. But you will see it will um, really lighten up when it dries. Um, and this is the general metallic, uh, the blue one. Um, I think it's called 543, actually. Yeah. <laughs> if you want the number of it uh, but as, as I said before I'm gonna put all uh, links in the description down below you will also have the full full list of all the pens that I'm using and um, I always have those lists uh, ready available for you because um, I can honestly say when I see someone do an awesome coloring I want to try to figure out how to do that um, it doesn't mean that I want to make that person's project I just want to figure out how to color that way to maybe be able to incorporate some of the things into my own coloring and that is how you grow as a colorist or as a designer or a creative person it is to uh, borrow things from people uh, but don't borrow or don't steal their complete look but borrow a little part here a little part here and a little part here and you will find yourself um actually have gotten your own style um and when i do that and i go into someone's uh, blog because i very often follow links or copy paste if they can't post a link i just copy paste the blog name go in and look at that very often when I do that um, and I, I get very sad when they don't haven't added the materials list uh, very I've seen it a little bit too many times when you are a person who are very you share a lot on the internet you share a lot of cards when you come to the blog post you might have one or two lines on your blog post um, and you have no details on how you made it um, and it's like I share all the details both because maybe you want to recreate it it's okay uh, however if you do share things on social media uh, and you have recreated my card um, I want you tag me uh, on social media link my blog if you're uh, anywhere else uh, Instagram you can't really link stuff but um, anywhere else please link my blog because um, I I work hard putting these cards together I work hard uh, figuring things out and, and doing these videos um, so I would super super appreciate uh, if you would um, give me credit when you do if, if you do uh, recreate my cards uh, also uh, when it comes to sharing and everything uh, every time you share my videos or my blog posts or anything to your friends and family um, it means a lot to me um, as a wanting to be a professional crafter I don't know if it's called professional colorist maybe oh, I, I really would like to be able to do that for full time 
And the only way for me to get these out is to do what I'm doing, sharing on social media and such. But that is that you, uh, my viewers, uh, share my videos and, and um, like my videos and all of those things so that other people who aren't my viewers also can see them. But I do really appreciate all of you who are watching. Um, I'm very humbled, I'm very proud to have such a great people uh, watching my videos and liking them and um, you make you make my day and you make it possible for me to continue doing this um, I don't earn really any money at all I do have uh, ads and I do have affiliate links um, affiliate links are basically a PR thing for companies so uh, it's not won't cost you anything to buy through the links that I have however I get a little bit of kickback not from everything but from a few supplies um, I get a little bit of kickback and it's a very little bit of kickback but it does add up to um, a little bit of money that I can put into more supplies and be able to continue making videos um, uh, I still pay the bulk of the materials that I'm using myself. I think maybe 5% of what I buy can be paid with this uh, money. However, it helps me to pay for the tool that makes the links in the descriptions and the tool that makes the links on my blog. It also helps me pay for the blog and everything that's around the blog. Um, so those things are great um, so uh, it won't cost you any extra money from using the links uh, basically it's just the same links that you would have gone through anywhere else it's just that uh, it's a little information that it's tagged on at the end telling the uh, company that you came from me and when you buy through that link um, I will get that money and the, the way they work, it can be good to know, but the way they work is if you um, are sitting on 14 different blogs and then you open, you go and add stuff from all of these different blogs into one uh, basket online, the one that was the last product that you put in, the link that that came from, uh, is the person that will get the affiliate money for the whole order. Um, could can be good to know um, because they can't really separate. They don't separate it into products. They separate, um, I get a little kickback from your full order. Um, so that's how it works. Um, yeah, it's a lot of arms. It's starting to come to the end of the video. It's starting to become a little bit later in the evening. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm actually not affiliated with Make It Crafty. However, I am working in their design team and I believe in transparency. So um, people might not know this, but if you are working as a design team member, uh, when depending on which design team you are in uh, you do get products in my case uh, i get new releases digital new releases i get digital stamps to use for my cards and um, a couple of times a year i get a little bit of um, shipboard pieces to work with so those are the things i get from make it crafty uh, most of the supplies though that I use for my cards um, that isn't the digital stamps or the chipboards I pay for myself. I'm not paid by Make It Crafty. I'm doing this because I really really love her products. They are awesome and I really really love Zoe and I want her to um, 
have the best and I want her to be able to continue producing her chipboard pieces and her digital stamps because I think they are awesome products. Um, this is why I've chosen to stay with her. Um, also because she's an amazing person and um, I do get I do get a lot out of it because you do get a lot of um, help with coloring, a lot of ideas that I wouldn't probably have had if I hadn't been in the design team and we didn't have the discussions we had in the um, design team groups. But um, yeah, that is how I work with Make It Crafty and I believe that transparency is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I have gone over to add glitter to the rest of the dress because I felt it wasn't enough with just on the jacket. I needed to have glitter on the rest of the dress. But in this case, I actually didn't have that many uh, kind of golden brown pens. Uh, I have this sand pen and then I had a darker pen and I tried it out and it was super dark. Um, it was like a chocolate brown and it was really really chocolate brown uh, almost towards coffee brown so uh, I couldn't use that one so I'm just using one pen uh, the Atoya speaker in the color of sand and I'm adding all of the dots so as I'm just using one pen um, I'm doing the dotting a little bit different because I'm adding um, intense amounts of dots in the shadow parts and then I'm adding um, lesser amount of dots in the lighter parts because that's the only way to kind of make a difference uh, for this color and as these are not anything that I need to blend or anything I'm just sitting there dotting away uh, on my on my dress one pen at a time which worked out pretty good um, and just as I did with the blue part of the dress, I'm going to use the white pen um, for the white parts or the, the uh, white glitters. And you can see it uh, both. Uh, I didn't think about it until I started dotting it and I realized, oh, that's a handkerchief. Does handkerchief really should there really be glittery wouldn't that be kind of scratchy against your nose or something but um as i started with it i just went with it so the handkerchief ended up being glittery too uh here i'm using um much like very simple dots don't add that many i'm very careful about dotting inside the folds um, I don't want it to be too, too sparkly in places that the light wouldn't hit, uh, but I still want it to be super sparkly. I want the whole dress to be super, super sparkly. It's a lot of fun. Um, I actually have a couple of these yellow rolls when I went through, uh, I actually throw through one out. Um, another one of my favorite white gel pens is the Uniball white gel pen. Um, the C Signo Uniball, um, the wider one, the 0 .0, 0 0.7 I think it is. It I really really love it, however mine dried out because I didn't put the cap on. You need to put the cap on, don't forget that. Um, but it will give you a lot bigger dots for so for that specific technique I'm not sure that it would be good I think this pen is much much better because it has the smaller dots um, and if you can't get the general pens by the way you can get them in bigger packages and so as a stamp saying they're easy to get there but uh, if you are not not buying from uh, Simon's stamp or um, uh, yeah 
is in a country where general roll pens are not readily available, you can use basically any one. But you have to try them out a little bit, see if they make small or big dots, and maybe change around the technique if you have one that makes bigger dots. But there are so many different um, gel pens out there uh, that you can use and play with. So um, do do recommend investing in like one of those. Uh, I know I see, see people buy from from Target both. Target uh, in Australia and Target in America, they buy these like 30 pen pen sets and they use them. Um, they're usually like a dollar or something. They're really inexpensive. So um, that could be something to play around with. And then you have a whole bunch of different colors. So you would be able to uh, add glitter to basically every coloring you do. Because that is what I want to do. I just want to add glitter to everything because you don't have glitter laying everywhere because it's it's just color it's just colored on which is awesome yeah well it's 145 and it's still going so i might have miscalculated the 145 it might be 150 we'll see um anyhow i'm starting to get to the finish of um the um, glitter dotting. To do the final touch to make it really look like glitter we're gonna make teeny tiny stars. These are super simple to do. What you want to do is you want to put your nib down on your paper and you want to kind of make a little bit of a circle, teeny tiny circle motions, not a round thing but a circle motions so that your pen will start kind of running a little uh, with the gel and then you use your nib and you kind of just flick out from the middle from that little circle that you made and you flick it out because then you will get much thinner lines and they will end up being in a um, like a V shape very thin V shape they will thin out um, and that will end up looking like small uh, four paint stars um, and it will make things look like the glitter a little bit more um, than just with the dots and um, I'm on my verge of uh, going overboard with all of those little glitter stars but I just couldn't stop myself it was it was a lot of fun um, I'm going to, to finish uh, off also to add a little bit of white detail to her hair um, because I felt I wanted to give that with all the white dotting everywhere I wanted her hair also to have a little bit so I'm using, using doing small um, V's both upside down and small V's to add like it looks like a shine um, and by adding it back on top of it instead of using the paper's whiteness underneath um, the the black or the gray will actually seep through a little bit so it won't be stark white it will just be a little bit white but yeah I think that is all for me today thank you if you have been listening to me at 148 um, Gosh, you've been listening for a while, haven't you? I want to thank you so much. Um, I want to thank all of you guys because you watching my videos means the world to me. And thank you so much. And if you like it, please thumbs it up. If you have any questions, just comment down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, just hit that subscribe button. Uh, but I'll see you later, so bye!